Anahid, how and when did you get the idea to make a documentary about Masi? Uh, you know, it has become almost uh, impossible for journalists in Iran to, uh, to, re to film and report what's happening in Iran. So the people in Iran has been own journalists and they film themselves and they tell us what's happening there. So what uh, I was most fascinated by it was when uh, the women wave their uh, hijab and uh, film themselves and send it to Masi. Uh, and Masi was so, and uh, the first time I saw Masi, it was uh, on uh, social media and I saw uh, very, she had very energy and she uh, had ambition to, to be the women's uh, voice. So I thought uh, if she can be the voice in Iran and for Iranians, I, I can uh, be a Masi and the women's voice uh, outside the country. Mm. And uh, I think Masi's work is very important, not only for Iranian women, but also to make us Westerners understand what's really going on in the country, instead of just relying on what the mainstream media tell us. So what do you hope is the message that reaches the public? You know, we've got uh, already a lot of outstanding results and the film has received much attention in many countries. Uh, I got many response from people who didn't know anything about Iran, what's happening to the people in Iran. And so my hope is that the film will be used as a tool to put pressure, pressure to on countries uh, that despite the knowledge that they know that the regime is like ISIS, uh, uh, and, but they continue their relationship with Iran as if they were democratic. So my hope is that. And one thing I noticed also watching some of the interviews Masi did is that Western nations always seem to have some sort of superiority complex when it comes to cultural issues in the Middle East, like we have all the answers to save its people. What do you think should change in this narration? You know, uh, they, uh, the Iranians don't need to be saved by uh, other people, uh, but they should also other people in uh, other countries show uh, also should also not be an obstacle for the Iranian people fighting uh, for their rights. For example, as a feminist minister, go to Iran and cover the, your hair. And this, at this, as the same time that you see that Iranian women who remove their hijab are arrested is something that I call hypocrisy. So. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, I also understand that uh, the movie was shot in 2019 before the pandemic. Uh, did yeah. the movie get delayed because of it? And did the lockdowns, uh, how did the lockdowns affect uh, the situation? Oh, no, I, yeah, I, uh, I was uh, lucky that I had finished my uh, filming and was in the editing phase. So when the pandemic came, I was most worried that uh, the pandemic would uh, overshadow uh, the terrible oppression in Iran that we showed in the film, but I, it didn't happen. Uh, the film was uh, screened in many uh, festivals and it's continuing to many festivals right now. And, uh, but the sad thing was despite the fact that the pandemic killed hundreds of people daily in Iran, the most important issue for the regime was the women's hijab. Now, um, I also watched uh, other two documentaries of yours, uh, The Queen and I and My Stolen Revolution, and I really love uh, your style. So I would like to ask you if there are other documentary directors that you look up to or that inspire you in your work. Of course, there, uh, there are many, but usually I go my own way. Uh, and my inspiration is people and their history. Yeah. Great. Uh, can I add just uh, one little question? Uh, yeah. What's your favorite movie? Maybe a movie that you've watched many, many times. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, right now, I'm, I watch a lot of uh, Syria and it's about, uh, I don't know the name in uh, English, but the, in Swedish, Falsk Identität. 
It's about uh, Middle East and uh, France, uh, about Iran and how all the countries, uh, they uh, cooperate to each other to oppress people. So it's uh, very interesting. <laughs>